Hi, this is Bob Ferguson with Fasten Nature. Today's video is going to focus on 10 facts of the cotton mouth. And for the purposes of this video, we're going to be including all the cotton mouths. So let's jump right into it. Fact number one, respect. Remember, we always want to respect the wildlife. These are a venomous snake species. They are a loaded gun. Do not mess around with a loaded gun because it has the potential to harm you. The snakes want nothing to do with you, but people usually get bitten when they are messing around with the snakes. So it's going to happen to somebody like me or mainly to people who are trying to kill them, thinking they're doing some sort of service to society. If you come upon a cotton mouth in the wild or any snake for that instance, just simply walk around, give it a wide berth, respectful distance, and then bites will not happen. Number two, venom. The venom of a cotton mouth is stronger than that of say its cousin, a copperhead. It contains powerful toxins that can destroy tissue. It's hemotoxic. It destroys the red blood cells and interferes with clotting. While deaths from a bite are rare, a bite can leave scars and in some cases might even require amputation. It can do tissue damage that will last forever. Unless a person has a severe allergic reaction, the venom does not affect the whole body and does not contain the nerve damaging toxins found in many rattlesnakes. Cotton mouth bites can often be treated with the Crofab antivenin. That's actually made from the venom of four different types of American pit vipers. Cotton mouth bites are fairly common in the lower Mississippi River Valley and along the Gulf of Mexico or the Gulf of America. <laughs> but fatal bites are very rare. Cotton mouse will not choose to bite as a first line of defense. One study found that cotton mouse produced 125 milligrams of dried venom on average, with some producing as little as 80 milligrams and others producing as much as 237 milligrams. Scientists are unsure exactly how much of this venom would be deadly to a person, but estimates suggest between 100 and 150 milligrams. So again, you do wanna be careful around these animals. Blisters and dead tissue are less common than with rattlesnake bites, but serious tissue damage can still happen because the venom breaks down proteins in the body. In some cases, muscle twitching has also been reported. In other words, as long as you're not being a jackass, you really don't have to worry about anything that I just said. If you haven't yet, go to fascinature.live and sign up with your email address for my newsletter. You'll get updates on new videos, blog posts, projects that I'm working on, conservation stories, all delivered to your email. You can unsubscribe at any time. Please consider signing up, fascinature.live. Fact three, description. The cottonmouth, also known as Echistrodon pisivorus or pisivorus, is the biggest type of snake in its genus. This genus has cantiles and copperheads in it, as well as the cottonmouth. Most adults are longer than 26 inches. The largest cottonmouth ever recorded was 74 inches long. It weighed a whopping 10 pounds. That's, that's pretty incredible. Even though they live in water, cottonmouths have big wide heads that don't seem made for swimming, but they do just fine. Their heads are shaped like triangles that stand out from their necks. They have between 23 to 27 rows of scales on their backs, and the scales are rough and ridged, also known as keeled. Young cottonmouths look different from adults. They have bright colors with dark bands across their bodies. They're very vibrant. They're gorgeous, gorgeous snakes. Anyway, these bands can be brown, gray, tan, yellowish olive, or almost even black. As cottonmouths get older, their colors get darker, sometimes turning nearly all black or dark brown. Their bellies can be white, cream, or tan with dark spots. Baby cottonmouths have a caudal lure, a yellowish or greenish tail tip that they wiggle to lure their prey. Fact number four, distribution. Cottonmouths are found in the eastern United States from the Great Dismal Swamp in southeastern Virginia. That's all the way at the tip of Virginia. South through the Florida Peninsula, west to Arkansas, eastern and southern Oklahoma, and western and southern Georgia. A few records exist of the species along the Rio Grande in Texas, but these are disjunct populations that are probably now eradicated. In Georgia, basically, you wanna follow the fall line down and they're usually in the coastal plains area. Fact number five, using species. Anything that is anywhere near water tends to be called a water moccasin or a cottonmouth. 
water snakes, obviously. They're often confused. Water snakes are also some of the worst biters in the snake world. I'd say it's between them, them and racers. Water snakes have round heads that aren't too distinct from their necks, but I do want to warn that they can pull their heads backwards, showing a triangle. You can't really count on any one set of characteristics here. It's really just kind of like a netting of everything all pushed together. They also have round pupils, whereas cottonmouths have elliptical pupils like all the other pit vipers. Another species they're often confused with is copperheads, their cousins. Copperheads have a lighter head mask that blends into their heads. Cottonmouths also have dark markings on their chin, whereas copperheads do not. Copperheads have that banding that kind of resembles a Hershey kiss, when, especially when viewed from the side, while cottonmouths have thinner, darker bands on their backs and sides. Again, I must implore, do not mess with or touch the snake if you are absolutely not sure of what it is. Fact six, food and feeding. Cottonmouth's diet includes a whole host of different prey items, mammals, birds, amphibians, fish, eggs, insects, other snakes, even their own, small turtles, and even small alligators. Like I said, cannibalism has been reported. The bulk of the diet consists of just fish and frogs though. Like I said, they're, they're near the water almost all the time. Some neat facts about their food and feeding is they tend to avoid toads. Any toad species they will avoid. They love southern leopard frogs and their favorite mammal seems to be shrews, at least in studies that have been performed. And another very neat fact about them is they have been found, their gut contents have been found to have small Burmese pythons in the Everglades. That's a good thing for the natural wildlife anyway. I'm gonna take a quick break from the video to share with you my first children's book. If you have any four to 10 year olds in your life, it's called Frog Butts and Toad Warts. I wrote it with Jessica Lee Anderson. She was the main author on it. She's a renowned children's author of 75 books. These are all my photos in it. It's on Amazon. The soft cover is $10. The hard co copy is $20. I'll have the link in the description. Please consider supporting it because we need to foster this in our youth. We need to foster an interest in them with the world's maligned creatures, the cryptic, the, the unnoticed creatures. And we can do that through today's youth to keep conservation moving forward. Thank you and back to the video. Fact number seven, reproduction. Male combat has been documented in the species to show dominance and pass on stronger traits. Live birth, usually once every other year, unless conditions are perfect, like say weather and food availability. They'll usually give birth to six to eight neonates, but it can actually vary from one all the way up to, I think, a record of 20 in captivity. The young are born in August or September. While mating can really occur any time during the warmer months of the year, and their range is so big that that's gonna certainly change depending on where you're at. They'll shed within two weeks, and then they'll start hunting and eating. And apparently, at that time, they prefer smaller frogs over fish. Females have been found to show guardian behavior, much like in other vipers. I've seen it happen with timber rattlesnakes in my area. Uh, they'll actually face intruders in a strike position and they'll usually stay with their offspring for up to two weeks. Cottonmouths can pre reproduce by facultative parthenogenesis. That's they are capable of switching from a sexual mode of reproduction to an asexual mode of reproduction. So I want you to listen to that again. They can give birth without ever mating with another snake. That's crazy. So basically they're the Virgin Mary of snakes. Fact number eight, etymology, echistrodon. Echistrodon is derived from ankistron and odon, which in Greek mean fish hook and tooth or teeth. So that's referring to the curved fangs of the species. Pisivorous or pisivorous is derived from Pisces and vero, which in Latin mean fish and to eat. So you can see how that comes together. Another common name for cottonmouth, like I've said before, is water moccasin. That seems to be the colloquial name that's used a lot in the South. Fact number nine, behavior. They're generally associated with various bodies of water, creeks, marshes, swamps, shores of lakes and ponds, even in brackish water environments. It's not absolutely necessary that they're gonna be found at water, but most of their favorite prey items are at water, so it only makes sense. And then finally, fact number 10, conservation. They're listed as least concern due to their, due to their abundance and widespread distribution. But as with any snake, and especially 
with venomous snakes, we want to touch on the importance of respecting these animals. They're gonna to continue to face persecution probably till the end of time. Why do people hate these snakes? I think it probably started in the Bible. That's not a knock on Christianity, but that's probably where it started. And there's just so many myths surrounding these snakes. I think the chasing thing is the biggest thing in the cottonmouth. Listen, these snakes do not chase you. The only time I can really see that being an issue or a confusion is if you get between a snake and the water and it's just trying to retreat and tries to maybe dart between your legs or maybe you'll see one swimming and it's swimming across a long lake and it sees your kayak and it looks it's a snake snakes aren't intelligent it looks like a place to rest so maybe it tries crawling up on the kayak to you know catch a catch a breath you know and people think they were getting chased down by the big bad water moccasin right it just simply doesn't happen these things know how to survive and that is certainly not by chasing something that could just stomp its head out in three seconds please remember to respect these animals please remember to share your love of them with people because if you can touch just one person maybe they can touch somebody else and that's how we spread the love for these guys once again guys this is bob ferguson with fascinature reminding you to step into the outdoors <laughs>